Hello everybody, it's Sue Kelly and today we're going to make a plate meat pie. It's made with minced meat and onions and mushrooms and you can have it hot or cold, whichever you prefer. I think some of you may have made it with me before, but you all really enjoyed it. So let's have another go, shall we? These are the ingredients you will need for your plate meat pie. I've got them on a tray today, something different. You need some vegetable oil or cooking oil, sunflower oil, that's to help fry off the veg and mints. You will need some Worcester sauce, some flour, plain or self-raising, doesn't matter. A little bit of butter, some mints. I think this is mixed beef and pork actually, but uh, whatever you like, you, you know the mints that you can eat. Um, tomato puree, some sort of stock cube. I'm using a beef stock cube here, but obviously you can use vegetable stock cubes. That's fine as well. And half, oh, it's all slipping. Half an onion. So I've cut a, cut a half an onion up, a couple of mushrooms and an egg. That's just to, pay, to brush over our pastry at the end. So that's our ingredients. I'll put them to the side. And then if we come over here, there's quite a bit of equipment to sort out, but easily, easily found in the cupboards. These are my scales, my weighing scales, my digital ones I'm getting used to. And then you will need some sort of oven proof dish. Now it might be um, a plate shape one that, that as long as it's oven proof but a shallow a shallow one because we're going to make the pie in it put pastry on the bottom and then pastry on the top so this is a tin one but you can get glass um, and all sorts then you need an ordinary plate that doesn't have to be oven proof that's just to cool our mince down on you will need a bowl to make our pastry in and a mug just to mix the egg, the beaten egg in. We need a rolling pin to roll out our pastry, a wooden spoon, a sharp knife, a tablespoon, a table knife, a fork and a pastry brush. This is my chopping board but if you're at work in the classroom, you can use your green chopping board for chopping the vegetables up, all right? And then last but not least, we need a measuring jug. And I'm going to use a little frying pan, but you can use a saucepan if you like. It's just to cook all the meat off before we cool it down, before it goes in the pastry. All right, let's make a plate meat pie. I'm going to make the stock up so that we're prepared to pour it in when the meat is done. You only need half a stock cube, all right? So I'll just cut that in half so you can share, share it between you in class. We'll put that in there, put that to one side and I'll get my spoon and go over to the kettle. It's just boiled, but I'll bring it back to the boil. Boiling water, please be careful when you're doing this. Have that so that you can see the, the measurements on there. And you want 100 mils, which is about there, I think. There we go, yeah, that's about right. And we'll hold the handle while you're dealing with anything with boiling water. And it will dissolve in the boiling water so we have our stock ready to add when the mince is browned off. I've already chopped the onions up as fine as I can but however you want to do it. There we are, they're in the bowl. So I shall now chop up the mushrooms. I, I think I mentioned it before, you can peel the mushrooms if that's what you do. But if you have a good look over them and make sure there's none of that little black earthy on it and that's all right. You can wash them if you like. I, these are already washed. 
and then just take the stalk off and maybe cut them cut them into sort of those sort of size chunks yeah not too small we want to want to know they're there all right so we'll cut it once that way once that way and then again so not too small they'll still be there so we'll put those in there in the bowl all right come over to the cooker with me so we're going to take my mince and come over here put that on there with a little bit of oil because if you've got nice fat free mince it might stick a bit so you just want a tiny little bit like a spoonful of oil on there just to get it going and this is that one There we go. So we'll heat the oil up a bit. We can put the mince in at the same time. There we are. And try and break the mince up. We don't want lumps in our meat pie. We want it all mixed up with the onions and the mushrooms so that we can spread it over the pastry without any lumps and bumps in it. So I'm going, to, I'm going to keep stirring that for about five minutes until the meat is all browned and cooked through. The mince is now cooked all, all cooked through and browned and loose, left all separate. There's a bit of fat there, but that's fine because we'll make, we'll make the gravy, thick of the gravy with that. So I'm going to add my onions, in they go. Here we go, and just stir them up a bit. All right. Then we're going to put some tomato puree in. Oh, I don't know. What does the recipe say? About a teaspoon. You know me and my, my amounts. We give it a good squirt. There we go. It's not gonna alter how the gravy thickens. A good, good squirt, but it, the tomato puree needs a bit of a cook, so we'll spread it out a bit. There we are. And we'll just cook that for a couple of minutes, get those onions browned a bit first, all right? We'll leave that on a low heat, just cooking for a couple of minutes. Here we are. See that the tomato puree has taken up any fat, so it's all, all nice and mixed up together there. And just to help make our gravy, I'm going to put a table of dessert spoon, isn't it? Now the dessert spoon is the middle sized spoon. Do you remember we've talked about this? The teaspoon's the smallest, the dessert spoon is the middle one and the tablespoon is the big one. So we've got the middle sized spoon, and you just want, just put your spoon in and, and scrape it off, scrape it off the top so it's virtually flat. All right. And just sprinkle it in and that'll thicken our gravy. So we'll stir that in a bit. Make sure your gas, this mine's a bit high there, isn't it? Let's turn it right down. All right. It doesn't catch. And then we put in our mushrooms. Go in. They don't take so much cooking. The stock we made earlier. Pour all that in. There we go. And Worcester sauce just gives it a nice little kick. A bit of flavour. So it doesn't come out too quickly. So you can just... Just give it a shake, all right, but not too much because it is quite strong. I don't want it to take over the flavour. So it's now, you can see it's got a bit of a gravy, but it's not, it's not sloppy. It's got enough to cook for a while. I'm going to leave this on a very low light. I'll turn it right the way down. Whoopsie-do, 
there we go turn it right the way down to there all right and just leave that simmering so that the mushrooms will cook the gravy will thicken keep an eye on it and if it looks like it's getting too dry you can always add from the kettle you could add just a little bit more water but don't go mad because we don't want a wet gravy in our pie it'll make We'll get soggy bottomed pastry again. That's our that's our funny one in the class, isn't it? We don't want any soggy bottom pastry. Let this simmer for about five minutes and it'll all thicken, the gravy will thicken and the flavours will combine. And if you like, you can pop a lid on your pan and it'll just stop it drying out completely. Pastry. We've done this before, haven't we? But I'll just remind you how to make pastry. So I've weighed out 200, let me check, 200 grams of flour there. All right, don't need to sieve it, that's fine. And I've also weighed out 100 grams of butter, but I've cut it into little pieces because it's easier to rub in. So in goes my butter. And this is when you get your hands. So make sure your hands are clean and you get your hands in there. And we rub the butter. So you squish the butter like that. Flatten it, but keep, keep flour in your hands so that butter doesn't stick to your hands. So that however the best you can do, just squish that butter between your hands, get it thinner and thinner. And you keep doing that until it looks like breadcrumbs. So. There it is. I've been working hard. So it's just, just all like, all rubbed in, like fresh bread crumbs. That's okay. Rub our hands clean. Maybe wash our hands quickly. Get the worst off. There we go. Then we're just going to use ordinary cold tap water. So I've got another jug here. You could use it out to just get it in a cup. So we're just going to get some cold tap water. Make sure it's cold. I'll put some in there. And then I'm going to get my knife. There it is. Get my knife back. Make a well in the middle. And pour. Maybe we ought to measure this, shall we? That'll be easier for you. Let's pour. A spoonful of water, one, two, let's start with three, shall we? Oop, three, three spoonfuls of water. And just stir in the middle and bring the sides down. And just cut it through with your knife. Keep cutting it through. And we'll add a little bit more water, another spoonful maybe. want to put too much water keep cutting through it and bringing the rest round so what have we done so far four let's put a fifth one in to get an idea of what we really need and when you think it's nearly there let's have a go with that take it off the knife so it's still a bit, bit breadcrumby around the edge, but we'll get our hands in and just start rolling it together. Squeeze it together with your fingers. Okay. If you put too much water in to start with, it's going to end up a really tough pastry. So it's surprising how it will go together if you give it a bit of persuasion squish it with your hands. There we are. There's our pastry. I'm going to turn the oven on now. Check nothing's in it. And we'll turn it on to 200 degrees. Most things get cooked at 200 degrees, don't they? Or gas mark six. So that can be heating up while we do the rest of the pie. My mince, I've turned the mince off and I'll bring it over. So it's it's nice and thick, still got a gravy there, but it's nice and thick, but we can't put it onto our pastry that hot. 
it'll just melt the pastry before it goes in the oven. So what we do is we just tip it out onto an ordinary dinner plate, scrape it all out there, and we'll just cool it down a little bit before we put it onto our pastry. There we go. So spread it all out. It'll just cool nicely enough. There we go. Back to the pastry. So what we're going to do, I'm going to cut it into two thirds, one third, roughly. Just roughly. So you've got a big bit and a small bit. So we'll put the, the big bits for the base, the small bits for the lid. So we'll put the lid aside and then we'll get some flour out. Don't use too much because it just dries the pastry out. We'll have a little, a little reservoir there, shall we? So I've got a spare there, I don't have that there. And then we'll knead, knead the pastry a bit onto there. And then we'll turn it over, get lots of flour underneath. There we go. If we want a round, we start with a round and roll it. If we want a square, we start with a square and roll it. So I'll just make this nice and round, cut it out to start with. Get my rolling pin, got a bit of flour on my rolling pin, and off we go. And you roll and move it. Roll it and move it. And hopefully it won't actually stick to the worktop. And if you, you just move, move it a little bit round, not fully round, just a little bit each time, it should stay in a circle. You find that if you're right-handed, you're, you're heavy-handed with, with that right hand. If you're left-handed, you're heavy-handed with the other side. So a lot of pastry is rolled, so it's very thin on one side. So keep, keep just checking around the, around the pastry as you roll it. Make sure, but if you keep turning it, it should be fairly even. Keep moving it. It's not stuck yet. Should we have a quick look, see if we, we've got the right size? There's our bowl, our tin. Little, little bit more of that. Now I can feel it's thicker there and it's thinner there. So I need to, need to roll it a bit more that side. Or maybe that way and that way. Okay. No. That's plenty, isn't it, that? Pick your pastry up. Over the top it goes, there we go. And just do it from this side for you. Just ease it in, into the, into or onto your plate. I've got quite deep sides here. Yours might be a flatter plate, but just make sure it's not stretched too much in the corners. All right. And then we'll get our knife and we'll just trim it round. Trim it round your plate or your dish, whatever it is. There we go. And we'll just put those on one side. There's our bottom layer. Take a bit of our flour, don't want too much, back on there. And I've got the little piece of pastry now. So again, give it a bit of a knead. Make sure it's all in one piece. There we go. We want a circle again, so we flatten it out into a circle. Move that knife and we'll roll it out. I haven't added the trimmings because I'm going to use them maybe to make a pattern on the top. So at the moment, I think we're all right with this. The rolling pin's sticking a bit, but not too much. Otherwise, your pastry will become really tough and chewy. It's gone out of shape, hasn't it? So let's push it push it back, push it back into shape. There we go. Keep moving it. Oh, it's beginning to stick. There we are. Keep moving it around. It's gone square, hasn't it? It's got a very funny shape. Put in a bit. Go that way and that way. 
and if you don't know what size you can use your rolling pin so we'll just have the end on one side and then measure with your thumb roughly to there okay is that going to be wide enough I think we might just get that in don't you so that's going to be our lid so I'll just pop our lid on one side for the time being you don't want to prick the bottom of this pastry like you would with an apple pie or something like that or a flan because we're not going to bake it first if we pricked it and put the mints in or the gravy would get underneath the the pastry and we'd end up with soggy bottoms again wouldn't we we don't want them so over our mints, which has cooled down. Where's my knife? The mince is nice and cold now, so it's a lot thicker. There we go. Put that in there. Scrape it in. Sorry for the noise, if you don't like scraping noises. There we are. Right there. And just spread it out across the bottom. Depends on how big your plate is or your tray is. It might be deeper, it might be shallower, it doesn't matter. Unless you've ended up with a great big plate, but we'll be fine. There we are, so that's our mints in there. That's that one. Then we need to put our lid on, but we need to glue it round the edges. So I've got an egg into, oh, oh, it's a tough, skin. there we are, do that there, put that there, fork, just break it up a bit, there we go, put that on one side, pastry brush, so we're just going to glue round the edges of, of the pastry on the inside, doesn't matter if your brush hits the, the meat, that's no problem. It's all going to go down one way in the end, isn't it? Here we are, lots of glue around the edges. And we'll pick up our top piece of pastry. We'll lay it over the top. Oops, just fits, look at that. It only just fits. We'll put that back, put it over a bit, there we are. So we'll, again, we'll go, I'll come down to you. I'm, I'm going to have a, a sort of a little a, a side that sticks up. Yours might be flat, that's fine. But just ease it in there. Make sure it's stuck to the, the eggy bit. Don't put your nails through. Girls, if you've got nails, be careful you don't stick your nails in there. There we are, all the way around. And then back to the knife bit of meat on it but it doesn't matter and we'll just trim those little edges off again not too much to trim off this time off you get round the edge there we go and we'll keep those trimmings to one side you can leave it like that if you wish or you could make a pretty pattern around the edge and um, I was taught at college to actually pull pull it in between your fingers like that. That's one way of doing it. And it makes a sort of fluted edge. So you're pushing the sides, which makes sure they glue on. That's what we're really doing, trying to make them glue on. I'll do half like that, or we could go back to our fork and you can just, let me hold the pie up a bit so you can see, you can just press with the fork. That's what a lot of people, that makes a nice pattern around there. Could have that or we could use the other end of the fork if you wished and just have a, a sort of any old pattern all we're trying to do is make sure there we go all that that the edges are stuck together there we are we've got a three-edged pie there and then in the middle we'll just let the steam escape we'll just make a little hole in the middle so that we don't end up with the pie doing that and it'll just settle We've still got a few trimmings left, so you can make some pretty patterns, all the little bits on the top of your, your pie, if you want to, you can leave it like it is. So I'm just going to screw them back up together a bit. Put some, put some out there. 
roll out, roll out my trimmings of pastry. Maybe put a bit more on my, there we go. I was taught when I was a little girl just to make some little leaves and they're dead easy to do. So you can, if you just cut, cut some strips off, I don't know about that wide. There we go. And then you're going to make diamond shapes really, like that, and like that. And then two more there. Oops. Like that. So I've got four diamonds. And then with your knife, you can just go down the middle and make like a leaf shape, leaf pattern, the veins on them. You could, you don't have to do leaves, you could put your initials on the top. If you're making a lot of pies to go in the oven, it might be useful to know whose is whose at the end, couldn't you? You could put your initials. If you've got a curly S for your name, S for Sue or S for Sarah or whatever, you could just you could just make um, make a sausage. You could roll it out, roll your pastry like a sausage, like that, and then just make it into the, well, upside down, make it into the letter S, and you could have your initials on top, whatever you want to do. Don't have anything too thick though, because the pastry will go really chewy. So I'm going to put, I might put the S on as well. Why not? So we need, we need to cover the whole pie with egg to make it look nice and brown and glossy when it comes out the oven. So we'll do that first. There are lots of egg all over it. Don't pour it on, obviously. But, uh, get all around the edges so it goes nice and golden brown. Then I'm going to put my leaves on. And if you just put the put one down, but loop it a bit so that it's not flat on on your pie. So you get the there we go. There we go. One, two, three, and another one. Four. And then we'll put some make sure it doesn't fill in the hole though. We need that little gap in the middle. And then we'll put some more egg over our leaves. So they go nice and golden brown as well. And there's our pie to go into the oven. Oh, I forgot to put my little S on, didn't I? Let's put S for Sue on there. Bit more, bit more egg, bit more egg. There we go. Now it's ready for the oven. It's been baking in the oven for 20 minutes now. It looks lovely and golden. Let's get it out. There we go. That looks lovely. Pop it on the top there. Shut the oven. Turn the oven off. And I'll bring it over. And there we have our plate meat pie. Now this is hot, obviously. It's just come out the oven. You can have it hot for tea as a, as a nice evening meal or, or lunch. Or if, you, if the weather gets any nicer and the sun comes out again, they're lovely meat pies just to let, let it cool down in the tin, leave it in the tin and take it on a picnic. They're, they're just as nice cold as they are hot. But let's, shall we open it up and see what's in there? I have to hold it still. Pastry's nice and scrunchy. Through there. See if I can actually get a piece out in one piece. If not, you can all have a jolly good laugh at me. It's coming out, it's coming out. There we are. One beautiful, oh, it smells delicious. One beautiful mince pie. Hot or cold? Enjoy. I hope you enjoyed watching our cookery lesson today. Thank you for watching and see you next time. As usual, there's some funny bits here where I really lost the plot. Bye. Hello, everybody.
everybody, it's Sue Kelly here and today we're going to make a plate meat pie. Lovely mince pie, mince meat pie that you can have. <laughs> Don't stop! <laughs> Don't get your hair in the pie. <laughs> oh, it's been a uh, It's a lovely mince pie that can be served hot or cold and I haven't a clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> For five minutes, I would say, five, ten minutes. Stop. Did I stop. Right, we're going to make, I'm going to make up the stop. Back to our bottom. Double check your height. Not height at all. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our cookery lesson today. I can't remember what I was going to say. I hope you enjoyed watching our cookery lesson today. And I've forgotten again. <laughs> You're not recording, are you? Yes. No. <laughs> no. 